Many thanks to Roby Toby from Pixabay for the image. Normally I wouldn't do this much detail. You can see there's a lot of detail in the ear. But uh, this video is about the difference of long hair and short hair on a dog. So I spent time and, and did the extra sketching first. Um, here we're doing his nose. I didn't use many colours in this picture. I used burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white, a little black to make grey and of course the tongue's pink. I think I used a magenta but I'm not sure and yellow for the eye. With gouache, I try to do all the larger areas first, just in a flat colour. But sometimes I do get caught up in a little bit of detail. And this is the difference between blending and layering, is that when you do a large area and it is still wet, if you put another colour over it, they will blend. Um, you'll see this with, here we go, um, those colours will blend together instead of, of being separate. Um, and when I do the whiter areas, if you've got an area that is dry and you use a very wet paint with lots of water over the top, then it will blend and not layer. Um, it's useful for when you want the colours to meld together a little bit and uh, I go back in later and do the fine detail when everything is, is totally dry. Now the idea for this video came about when somebody on Facebook asked me the question of doing long hair on dogs and I said that you do it in clumps rather than individual hairs. And as I was doing this, the ear is the long hair, the, the face has much shorter hair. So there's the two types. Um, so when you, you see me doing the shorter hair, I get the basic colours down first and then at the very end I'll go over with a very fine brush and add just a few individual hairs where they are needed most, which is often around the edges, the whiskers and between colours to show that the dog isn't totally smooth. In coloured pencils, one of the mistakes I often see is people using blenders on animals. Um, animals aren't smooth. They're, they've got coat and they've got movement to that coat, even if it's short. Um, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't use a blender with coloured pencils. Painting around teeth bit of negative space there. This painting actually took uh, a whole day, shall we say about seven hours, maybe six. I didn't really time it but I started at one afternoon and the batteries ran out that night so I couldn't keep going. So I started again this morning and finished it at about one o'clock in the afternoon. So it, w it was a good day's work. And yet it's only eight inches by ten inches. So there I've got most of the face without too much detail. Mm -hmm. 
The teeth aren't white. They have a little bit of yellow in them. In this case, ochre. Um, just to tint them so they're not as white as the paper. And at the back, they're a little shaded. He's in pretty bright sunlight, but underneath his chin, there's a shadow because the sunlight's beating down on his head. I love the way you can watch the gouache dry and, and sink into the, the layer beneath on these. I just want to get that area lighter, so I added white. Knowing it's going to sink in because uh, I used a very wet white. Still doing individual little strokes with my, my detail brush, but it's still going to be subtle. Ah, yes, I, st I got that brush new. I thought I'd try it for that, but it did not work. So I went back to my detail brush. It's good for grasses, but it was a bit too rough for this. It was called a wisp brush. Sometimes I use it on, on hair, but it was too rough for this fella. Okay, now starting the longer hair on the ears to to give you a good look of what's happening, I've outlined everything in dark umber and sometimes even a little bit of black added to it to make it more so in the um, really shaded areas. We'll calm that down later on, but I wanted to show you how the hair goes down in clumps it's not individual strands so there will be some individual strands later but first of all we've got to get these clumps right the way that they hang and twist over each other so they're first in burnt umber and then um, burnt sienna and then some sienna to give the red tint and I may have in areas used mixed it with a bit of yellow ochre to make it more orange and less dark and this is squashed this is the, the beauty of gouache. You put your dark colours on and then you can go over them with lighter colours to brighten areas. You can't do that with watercolour. You have to leave those, those light colours um, paper. Whereas with this, you can go backwards and forwards. You can lighten it and then think, oh no, that's too light and darken it a bit again and then think, oh no, that's too dark and liner it's very forgiving and you can put as many layers as needed on so here's after the um, umber and the raw sienna we're going over it in ochre and in some areas i've either mixed it with a little bit of the sienna or a little bit of white whether i needed it darker or lighter and in some areas just um, the umber by itself and now we'll let that dry and then we do another layer and this is the highlights of the white and you can see where it sits above and then areas where I either haven't let it 
dry enough or the white is just a little bit too wet and it sinks in. And I'll go backwards and forwards with this and until I'm happy with it. I just wanted to do some of the rest of the dog. There's a lot of things that will change your colour scheme. You Background is one of them. Everything will look fine. You'll put the colour on the background and then you'll realise that some areas are too dark, some areas are too light and you'll have to adjust. So I just wanted to get this area done. It's not finished. But there's something there for me to, to look against. Now, I outlined everything again in the burnt umber. And then I realised that's too dark. It looks too outlined. And while some things I love outlines like Van Gogh's work, I, you know, even cartoons, the outlines add to the drama of the piece. For this piece it was wrong so once again I went over it and just softened them a bit, made it the lines narrower by going over it with um, umber. I keep saying umber, ochre, yellow ochre by going over it with ochre. Don't mind me, I'm getting old. I never really like giving colours because I think y you look and use the colours you want to. Some artists go to great detail to make colours exactly the same as the photo. Um, I, I want to make them, I, I don't want a complete replica of the photo, we have the photo. So I want it to, to look like art, not to look like a photo. Uh, when I did coloured pencil work, most of the comments were, oh, it looks just like a photo. And I know people meant it in a kind way. They meant, they thought they were flattering the piece. And I always thought, oh, I failed. It's not art, it's a photo. So photos can be art to the photographer, but not when you're just copying one because a client has given you a photo to do and that's the photo you've got to do. Uh, even then, you know, you, you make it your own. You find your own style. Use your own colours. Don't be slave to the, to the um, photo. It's just a reference. So you can see here I'm, I'm toning down those outlines and making the a li little more realistic. And we'll add some detail shortly. Remembering that uh, this was stopped many times to let it dry and indeed to let me sleep. So it wasn't done all in one sitting. So now we work on the grey area. I don't want to lose all that grey but I definitely need to lighten it because um, it's he's he's mostly white in that area, but not as white as paper. In watercolor, you can leave the paper um, as your your main white, but here that's not needed, and I want to leave a little bit of the gray. Let a little bit of the gray to come through. Oh, please subscribe and like. Uh, you don't know how important it is for us because we get views. If if you like us, then um, YouTube says, oh, that must be a good video to show people. If you don't leave that like, 
um, the YouTube says, well, nobody likes it. We won't show it. So I, I would like to get seen. I'd like to grow my subscriber list and get more people to see my art. So please like, even if you don't subscribe. But if you do subscribe, then you'll it'll come up on your wall and you'll see when I have new things out. So this is actually the next day. Everything was dry. I put the background in. My batteries were charged. I just wanted a, a mottled background, so I used several different shades of green made with several different blues and umber. Umber, there I go again. Ochre. Now I've got my detail brush out and we're doing the serious detail. So this is the tiny little hairs, the the tiny little bits of colour change. I'll darken around the teeth a little bit so that they stand out more. Um, but mostly it's it's tiny hairs that you had to wait. The reason I brightened the pink in the tongue was it's a very cool background and I wanted that shot of warmth in the middle to to be a focal point and just to stand out a bit from the coolness. All the little wispy chin hairs. And around the edges, which you've got to do the background before you can do this. So you do the background, let it dry. And then you can put your whiskey bees on over the top. And it makes the dog fit in with the um, background. It's it's not just flat. It, it fits into a scene. And a few wispier hairs on the ears. Not a lot, but most of the wispies are short. On the reference picture, the dog was wearing a collar. Um, I didn't want to put a collar on it. And then we'll sign it. And it's finished. And there's uh, the finished item. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please do like it. Um, the video that is. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.